Hello! Today's stories come from r slash Entitled People. Today is the start of something beautiful. It's the first of two videos covering many stories and updates of the most entitled mother who ever did entitle. On r slash Just No Mother-in-Law, I bring to you the story of Piercing Patty. I'm a bit worried about length, so we're going to skip the comments and roll through however much we can get through today. A big credit goes to user We Are Pungency from Best of Redditor Updates for recovering the first few stories that were deleted. It begins with Kicked mother in law out of the house for putting my career in jeopardy. I created this throwaway because I cannot tell anyone else about this crazy biscuit's actions without putting my own career at risk. You guys, I need to vent. I am still shaking with anger as this only happened a few hours ago. Mother-in-law is from a small town in the American South, and she has all those gossipy small town tendencies. It has never been a problem for us, me and hubby, before, because we live in major city clear across the country from her. Aside from her usurping dinner conversations during visits to catch us up on the scandalous comings and goings of people in her congregation, we didn't really have to deal with this side of her too much until today. I am a family law attorney with a boutique firm. My specialty is divorces. I'll admit, on a day-to-day basis, my drama llama is clinically obese with all the feed I get from work. But when I have some downtime, I still lurk this subreddit because I just love the theatrics on here. Sure, divorces are entertaining sometimes, but the stuff on here gives Shonda Rhimes a run for her money in terms of shocking behavior. Mother-in-law loves that I am a divorce attorney. She is always pumping me for stories from work so that she can gossip with her congregation. And rarely, I do throw her a bone. Never with specifics, all within my ethical boundaries. For example, I tell her, my client has five kids but only wants custody of three. I don't elaborate and just let her feign absolute shock over someone not loving their children equally. Fast forward to the title incident. Mother-in-law is in town for my husband's birthday. We flew her in because it was a nice thing to do and up until today, I was fond of her. She's staying with us, which is fine because we have a guest room and our home is large enough that no one's personal bubble feels invaded. As most mother-in-laws do, she is always insistent on cleaning my home. She's never snooped before, so it doesn't bother me, but I do very firmly tell her that we have a housekeeper and to just enjoy her vacation. Today, I worked from home, as I often do when I have no meetings. I was in my home office slaving away on one of my more contentious, read juicy, cases and I took a break to shower and get ready to take mother-in-law out to lunch. Hubby was at work, so it was just us two gals until quitting time. I figured we would grab some overpriced salads and do some window shopping. What could go wrong? Immediately after the iced teas were served, mother-in-law says, So, whatever happened to Mr. and Mrs. Smith's embryos? Did she get custody, or were they destroyed? and some more very detailed questions about the case that I am definitely too paranoid to even mention vaguely because of her. You guys. I literally snorted my tea. It went everywhere. I look like the Bellagio fountain. Mother-in-law had the audacity to go through my case files, my confidential case files, and read the facts while I was in the shower. I asked her how the crumbs she knew so much about the case I was working on and she said she was cleaning my office while I was getting ready, and that I had just left it out. Um, no, the barnacles, I did not. They make you take an entire class in law school about doing stuff like this. I would never. It's been ingrained in me since my first year that attorney-client privilege is paramount. And if pigs flew and I did leave it out, this case is a monster. To garner that much information about the divorce would require her to turn several pages. So me leaving it out, is no excuse as she would have had to sit her slug brain down and read through it. It's not like all the facts could have fit on one sheet of paper that just so happened to be lying on my desk. She said she needed to be in my office because it was filthy. Okay, I'll admit it's a little dusty and there are a few coffee mugs in the room, but it is by no means filthy and the reason it's in this minor shape of disarray is because I don't allow the housekeeper into my office for this very reason. I opened my wallet, threw some cash onto the table for what we ordered, and told her to get in the car. I cannot even remember the ride home. I was just yelling and lecturing and lexia yelling. This was an incredibly crappy thing for her to do. 
Working at a boutique firm, my reputation is everything to my career. I cannot have word on the street that I just go around town spilling client secrets at the local watering hole. She can very well ruin my budding career by doing this. I think I threatened to sue her if she blabbed about this case. I definitely threatened to tell her son what an imbecile his mother is. I threatened to never have her in our home again. It does matter, because as soon as we got home, I told her to pack her things, or I'll have her arrested for trespassing, and then I called her an Uber and listed the address on my app as the airport. I didn't even pay for her plane ticket. I don't know what's going to happen, actually. I do know that she's at the airport right now because that's where the app dropped her off. My husband won't know about any of this until 5.01 p.m. because he works on a secure job site and there's no phone calls or texting. I have steam coming out of my ears. I do feel guilty because she might be stranded at the airport without my financial help, but what she did was so out of line that I think a few hours of time out would do my pettiness some good before I finally call the American Airlines terminal and get her a one-way ticket back to Gossipville, USA. As I said, I love drama too, but not enough to put anyone's livelihood at risk. It was such an intrusion that I am at a loss for words. Am I mad for myself? Am I mad for my client? This is the first just no thing that she's ever done, and I'm glad I demonstrated that this behavior is not to be tolerated. But part of me kind of thinks she's just too dumb to realize how bad her actions were. I'm going to wait until my husband comes home before I try to contact her. I'm still too much in a state of what the F to deal with her right now. Update one. If your eyeballs are itching for an update, then you better sit down. It's a long one. I want to thank everyone for their support. I wavered in justifying my reaction because it was so strong, but I honestly don't regret it. I was feeling kind of down for being so harsh on her right after she left, but you guys really drilled into my head that everybody knows what privilege is. I mean, law and order has been on air for 400 years, and there's no way she doesn't know that what you tell your lawyer is confidential. I acknowledge that it may seem extreme to some of you who don't practice law, but this is my livelihood. This is the only thing that I know how to do professionally. It took me a lot of money to be able to do this, school, and the consequences for a breach like this are very severe. In all reality, I could lose my license for something like this. I exploded like I did because it was just so disrespectful to the life that I had tried so hard to build for myself and her son. To answer the most common questions I got on my original post. While I was tearing her a new one, she was very belittling of the severity of the situation. She would say things like, it's no big deal. I don't even know them. Or, you can trust me, we're family. I think that her not understanding that this isn't just gossip made my mind stop working. It literally broke me, and I had no more rational biscuits to give her. You want to snoop? Fine. But don't make me feel like the jerkwad when you get caught. You were the one in the wrong. The whole time she was just trying to make me feel like I was overreacting, and that what she did wasn't that big of a deal. Um, yes, the frack it was. She acted like she was just humoring my temper tantrum, that type of, oh, when you tire yourself out, I'll put you down for a nap attitude. I'm not a toddler mother-in-law, but that mentality would explain why it was so easy to get her into that Uber. She probably thought she would be able to return in a few hours after I had calmed down. My home office has a six-digit numerical code lock. We installed this not because I ever anticipated something like this would happen, but because Hubby also owns a lot of firearms. How did she get the code? Yes, just guess. She absolutely needed her son's original birth certificate. Why? We are fully grown adults. What could you possibly need it for? And instead of getting it for her like a person who has been specifically trained on the importance of security would, husband just stayed on the couch playing video games and gave her the code and told her exactly where to find the birth certificate. All my what's, all your what's, everybody's what's. Don't worry, he understands his colossal mistake now. Yes, we can trust her with guns. No, we can't trust her with anything else. Thank you for all of your concerns about my job. Some comments were very sweet, and I can't believe you guys care so much about me. I'm just a screen name to you. However, it's not necessary to make suggestions on how I handle the consequences this situation will bear on my career. I know exactly how to deal with the situation professionally. I just didn't know how to do it personally. Okay, now on to what happened. I decided not to shoot my husband a warning text, as some of you suggested, because I wanted to make her tie her own noose. I wanted her to tell him such a vivid story so rich with fake details that it would be impossible for her to backtrack when I disprove her version of the events. I even wrote out a bunch of pointed questions that he can ask her in order to corner her into telling the truth, not unlike questions you would use in a deposition. I don't know why I was preparing a litigation strategy. 
I guess I was swinging the pendulum too much to the other side because of how emotional my reaction was earlier. I wanted to be extra rational now. It's a little embarrassing in hindsight. This was the first time mother-in-law and I ever had a disagreement so divisive that it required my husband to pick sides. And to be honest, I have so much faith in my husband, but because this was uncharted territory, I didn't know what to expect. I was pretty sure he is my partner in love and in life. But y'all really freak me out sometimes with those mama's boy stories. I'm glad I was right about him. A little after six, husband walks into the house and asks me so bluntly, why are the cops going to sue my mom? It was so far removed from what actually happened that I started laughing hysterically. That's not what happened, baby. I told your mom I would call the cops on her if she didn't leave immediately. And I'm ashamed to admit that I did threaten to sue her when I was yelling indiscriminately. I have no actionable cause that I could prevail on, really. I told him what happened, and he was just confused. He already talked to mother-in-law, so he knew she was at the airport, and he knew the situation. Luckily for me, she didn't come up with any elaborate lies to tell him. She truthfully told him her version of what happened and tried to make it seem like I blew it out of proportion. I half expected this because if she thought she was doing something truly, really wrong, she would not have brought it up so casually over lunch. I told him we need to buy her a plane ticket because she wasn't welcome back in our home and he agreed. He didn't try to justify her actions and he understood so clearly how bad this could have been for me and for us. We just closed on our home two months ago, so going down to one income would have been a financial disaster. We are both kind of sad that the trip ended this way, but it's not something mother-in-law and I can just heart to heart right now. I need time. I need space. I need wine. Bonus. She was having a pity party at the airport for almost nine hours because she forgot her wallet at our place. She wanted hubby to drive it to her because how else would she board a flight home without ID? And of course, she couldn't call me because I'm so scary when I yell. So please, please, hubby, you have to find her wallet and bring it to her. It was on the neatly made bed. I mean, come on. At least toss it behind a nightstand or something so your story would be more believable. She probably just wanted to see my husband without me and convince him I've lost my marbles being so upset like that with her. Joke's on her. I made him buy her a non-refundable plane ticket online before he left the house. Bye, you old shrew. Update 2. Welcome all llamas. This is my last and final update. Also, I will probably delete my previous post soon for obvious reasons. I took a personal day today to deal with the fallout of her idiocy and have just enough time during my lunch to sneak you guys a snack. You guys, we won. Kind of. Me, you, and everyone here on Just No Mother-in-Law. All victory is shared as it was a collective effort. I got a groveling apology this morning from mother-in-law. I listened to her. I mean, truly listened to her. And you know what? It was a really weird apology. I said a bunch of neutral ahas uh and yups, but I didn't really accept the apology yet because why should I? You can be as sorry as you want for something you did, but it's the other person's prerogative to forgive you. Saying sorry isn't a carte blanche to be a smeghole mother-in-law. I think I need more time. Hubby knows I'm not a quick forgive. Okay, so when we left off, Hubby was driving her forgotten wallet to the airport. Here's where some background is helpful. You guys, my husband is a monk. He has the temperament of an iceberg. I'm the one with a fiery disposition. Can you tell? What can I say? Opposites do attract. It takes a lot to set him off, and it's usually only when there is a direct threat to me or his beloved best friend, our dog. Well, hours go by and he's still at the airport. I knew this was going to happen because the plane ticket we bought mother-in-law wasn't until very early the next morning, and she probably wanted to spend more time with her son or rewrite history, or alienate more people's trust. I don't really know. But I do know that when my husband came home from the airport, I knew that stuff went down. He came into the house like a hurricane. Doors were slammed, keys were thrown. He even felt compelled to kick a dog toy, which only made the dog happily run after it and break all tension. Apparently, his hours-long conversation with his mother was frustrating but productive. I will summarize below. Mother-in-law spent an hour trying to minimize the situation. She doesn't think what she did was that big of a deal because of family loyalty or whatever. Of course, she will never say anything about the case because we are her family. It was then that Hubby showed the world his sexy diamond spine. He told her that if family was so important to her, then she would not have hurt me like this. And that I am her family because I am his family. Swoon. She seemed to start getting how serious the situation is at this point, because of course, it's not that big of a deal until her precious baby is hurting. He then went on to say how this could have hurt him, 
No, my husband put me through law school. I'm not saying he was with me when I was in law school. I'm saying this man paid my tuition and supported me all three years. We did this stuff together. He told her how much we, as a couple, invested in my career and how we could have lost the house because of her. He told her that now that I was finally practicing, that it was his turn to go back to grad school and how she could have completely annihilated that option. It was around this time that she started ugly crying. You know what I'm talking about. Snot, tears, saliva. She never meant to hurt him. She is so, so sorry. She won't say anything to anybody about what happened. She will never jeopardize his career. Are you snotting kidding me? That's literally my title. Oh my gosh, I am hyperventilating just typing that out. So she finally understands the gravity of what happened. He told her that what she did was a non-negotiable deal breaker and that he wouldn't hold it against me if I never allowed her in our home again. And this is where things got a little dicey for her. She got her giant puppy eyes all and welled up and pouted, but I'm your mother. Can't you just tell her to let me back in? That's cute, mother-in-law. The last time someone told me what to do, i.e. to calm down, they ended up in an Uber to the airport. Let's see how your son's luck will run with that request. Hubby knows this little quirk about me, and he got frustrated because it's like mother-in-law is not hearing what he was saying. He was trying to explain to her that this was between me and her. She breached my trust, and these are my consequences. Husband and I are equals. He is not my boss. She can't, can I speak to your supervisor, her way out of this. She was still not getting it by the time she had to board, so he just came home and made a bunch of loud noises because it's hard on him to have two very important people in his life go toe-to-toe. He told me it was like she was deliberately playing dumb to not face the music. Duh, babe. Anyways, long story short is that she called to beg my forgiveness this morning, but the apology was filled with, I would never do anything to hurt my baby. I'm so sorry for all the pain this caused him. I was wrong, etc., etc. I mean, am I wrong to hold out for an apology to me? I don't want to dwell on this, but it seems like she doesn't really give a barnacle about how this could have affected me. Only when it was explained to her how it could have hurt her son did she feel even an iota of remorse. The end. Edit. Ah, I almost forgot about the worst part. Okay, so you know how she forgot her wallet? Well, if you've been following closely, we didn't finish lunch and mother-in-law decided to pull a poorly executed power move by leaving her wallet behind. So of course she must have been hungry waiting at the airport all that time. Did she have to beg for money? Did she have to depend on the kindness of strangers? Of course not. This is just no mother-in-law. She used Apple Pay from a phone we pay for, linked to an account we also pay for. Her son had to explain to her that if I lose my job, we won't be a dual income household anymore and we will have to trim the fat. So bye-bye, QVC and random church rummage sales. We would have cut your allowance, lady. This got her attention, and I firmly believe it's what got her to even muster an apology to me as insincere as it was. Update three, edit. Holy barnacles. I was so, so, so ready for all this to be over that I didn't realize how blind she's made me. Of course, it doesn't matter what she thinks is true or not. She still went into my locked office and opened a file that was put away. How is any of that okay, no matter what the explanation is? I tell you, dumb is contagious sometimes. If you find yourself exposed to dumb, have a shortness of breath or blurred vision, please contact your local emergency room for a mother-in-law amputation. Nope, screw her. I'm still mad. Also, not that I own anyone an explanation for what I do with my own money, but mother-in-law gets an allowance from us because she makes just enough to cover her mortgage and her bills. A few hundred a month for us is not a lot, but to her, it's the difference between eating fresh, healthy foods or processed junk. One missed paycheck can equal disaster for her. That's how tight her budget is. We pay for some day-to-day stuff because, to be frank, I don't want her living with me. Sex in the kitchen is fun. Sue me. (laughs) Don't. I'm very busy at work already. Okay, so I know that I said my last update was going to be my last update, but I needed an outside perspective on this situation. I don't even know how to process what mother-in-law said to me. It broke my brain. Some of you might remember that I'm the attorney who unceremoniously threw her mother-in-law out of the house for being nosy. Well, I obviously have not spoken to her since the purge, a national holiday for all daughter-in-laws. However, with Thanksgiving being next month, she had a reason to contact us. She sent a few text messages here and there and was met with non-committal will sees from both of us. I guess the lack of concrete plans made her bite the bullet and call me, even though she's so scared of me, I roll. So some background here is necessary. 
Husband's parents are divorced. Christmas is always with my family since neither side of his family has any children and my side has like a million. Christmas is more ever so magical with children because they believe in Santa. I don't think that's a statement you can find fault with. Anyway, so to compromise, we spend even-numbered years at husband's father's house for Thanksgiving and odd-numbered years at mother-in-law's house. As you can probably guess, I am not keen on going to see her this year. So back to the phone call. She calls me and just outright asks if we are coming to Southern State this year. I wasn't sure about going before, but her audacity made me snap. I said, no. In fact, I'm still mad at you. I sure as Santa's beard haven't forgiven you and you never apologized to me even though I'm the only one you have wronged. She knew we weren't going to go, otherwise why would she ask? It's an odd-numbered year. This is one of her years. She was either trying to mend things with me in time for the holidays or she was trying to bait me. Either way, it kind of worked. This is where she drops this idiot bomb on me. She's sorry. But she doesn't understand why I'm so mad because it's not like she could have said anything anyway. After all, by law, you're supposed to keep your family secrets or you can go to jail. I will admit, this is where I short-circuited. I should have asked more inquisitive questions. I should have investigated further, but it was really hard for me to respond because, like I said, my brain broke. From what clues I was able to gather during her ramblings, she has confused spousal privilege with familial privilege. Alert, this is not a thing, so please don't say you learned it from me. So she thinks that because spouses cannot be compelled to testify against one another, that this means families can't tell on each other. Okay, I want to make one thing very clear here. I did not marry into the mafia, so at this point you should be laughing so hard that you're peeing in your pants. Why would the family need that much protection, mother-in-law? Why? Second, how does this mean you can snoop at my files? No one in the family is on trial. Spousal privilege only comes into play when there's a criminal or civil suit occurring. It's not dormant right. I just can't. Third, yes, spouses cannot be compelled to testify against each other, but they can absolutely waive that privilege. Not that she cares, but I just wanted to announce that fact as a PSA so that no one will ever get this so wrong again. I'm still not going to eat turkey at her house and make nice, because the situation is just too recent for me to be genuinely cordial to her yet. But you guys, I'm inclined to begin to forgive her. Her explanation of why she thought it was okay to read my files is just dumb enough that I can understand it being a mistake of ignorance. But it's honestly too smart for her to make up out of thin air. She's not complex enough of a thinker to backtrack and make up an explanation like this. She really isn't. This is where I need your help. I am clouded by my legal education. Of course I think this is beyond dumb, and the fact that anyone can even fathom the concept of familial privilege makes me want to stick a Phillips head screwdriver into my ear and swirl. But not everyone went to law school. Can someone reasonably have made this mistake? I don't want to be mad at her forever. It honestly takes too much energy to be mad at someone you love. Bonus. We sent her a credit card instead of depositing cash into her account every month. It was a small and petty thing, but knowing that we can see her purchases really cut down the splurge spending. It's really only groceries and gas now. I did this under the guise of, oh, we'd really like the airline miles. But really, it was a, I'm super duper mad at you, but I already kicked you out of my house, so really, what else can I do maneuver? We're definitely running long, so I'm going to jump straight into the last story, completing part one, where we're given a name for our antagonist. She's earned a name, Piercing Patty. Hi, it's me again. I'm the attorney daughter-in-law whose mother-in-law broke into her home office and read through a case file and proceeded to casually discuss it during lunch and then got immediately thrown out of the house. Remember me? Ah, yes, it's ringing bells, isn't it? Hello, old friends. I've named her Piercing Patty because of her penchant for piercing attorney-client privilege and also because, screw her, her real name is Patricia. Does it feel good to have your privacy compromised, Patty? Yeah, my client probably didn't like it either, you nosy hag. I deleted my post because I quite like my job and wish to keep it. But you guys kind of get the gist from the previous paragraph, so let's play some catch up. Last you heard of me, I was trying my very best to forgive her because up until then she had been a very good? No, that's not it. Adequate. She was a very adequate mother-in-law to me. Well, Now she's number one on my blacklist, followed closely by people who stick their chewed gum on the underside of tables and people who don't like dogs. This is the saga of how she and I came to be no contact. 
It is very long with a lot of moving parts, so I will likely have to break this story into several posts. Piercing Patty, PP for efficiency, has a younger sister who in turn has a daughter. The aunt-in-law is a nice lady, but our relationship consists of very polite conversation every other Thanksgiving, so I don't consider us very close. PP and her sister live in southern state. Husband and I live in much larger, more urban coastal state. The aunt's daughter currently attends college in our city. She is a very bright young woman, and I've grown to be very fond of her. Since we are the only family the daughter has in the area, we get the pleasure of hosting her for long weekends during holidays, but would not warrant a trip all the way home for a college student. It's great. She gets to come do laundry, and I have someone to talk to about my guilty pleasure, celebrity gossip. We feed her. She walks the dog for us. Sometimes I treat her to a mani-pedi, and then we send her back with clean clothes and some leftovers. Aunt-in-law has expressed how grateful she is that we open our home to her kid. It's no problem at all. It truly is our pleasure, as your kid is awesome. Well, about two months ago, the poor girl was struck by a drunk driver as she was driving home from class. It was bad. The car looked like a crumpled piece of paper. When I went to the tow yard to get insurance figured out and I saw how her vehicle looked, I felt like the wind was knocked out of me. We were very lucky. She only suffered from a broken leg and fractured wrist, but it could have been so, so, so much worse. And I honestly cannot even talk about the accident without devolving into pure, unadulterated rage. Naturally, her mom was in a frenzy and needed to see her daughter ASAP. Now, this part is unconfirmed, but the story is that her mother was so emotional about the whole ordeal she asked PP to come along for support. I think the more obvious reality is that PP invited herself along and the mom didn't have the capacity to say no to her because, um, hello, her child is injured. PP, I'm on to you. All those times I thought I was being paranoid, I wasn't. I see you now, clear as day. You are committed to the long con. I know this won't make sense to you guys yet, but it will in my next few posts. Husband and I obviously got to the hospital first. We saw our niece, made sure she was okay. Hubby stayed with her while the doctors did doctor things, and I went off to do lawyer things because if you think you can get drunk and T-bone the only other person in my life who even knows the name of all the Kardashians, you've got another thing coming. Then her mom and PP arrive mid-afternoon the next morning. They literally book the next flight out. Cool, I get it. But we did call you guys to tell you that she was pretty much A-OK, so maybe you could have slowed your roll a bit and planned this trip a little more carefully. As in, Where are you going to stay when you get into town, Patricia? Of course you expect it to be my house. Why wouldn't it be? It's not like I banned her from it for breaking into my home office and doing crap that would get my metaphorical butt kicked by the state bar or anything. But since her niece is in the hospital, I'm the one that's going to look like the jerk for following through with my rules. Meanwhile, PP is sitting in the corner acting really tired. Now I say acting really tired because it was her comical adaptation of how a tired person would act. She was dramatically yawning, stretching her arms, rubbing her eyes. She looked like a French mime. She didn't say it outright, but I knew she wanted to go home with us. Too dang bad. As soon as I saw that the kid was being cared for by her doting mother, I was ready to peace out. I was wiped. I gave husband the signal we use at cocktail parties to indicate let's get the frack out, and we put on our coats. PP stops us and has the audacity to say, well, what about me? Uh, what about you, PP? For once, for once, for dagnabbit once, none of this is about you. Where am I supposed to stay? Who cares? Don't you creatures live in a cookie tree or some crap like that? I pause for a second and realize it's not about me either. Fully ignoring PP, I turn to the mom and ask her where she had intended on staying. She tells me she plans on staying at the hotel adjacent to the hospital because they didn't rent a car and she wanted to be accessible to her daughter. You know, like a normal person. So there you go, PP. If the real reason you came was to help your sister, then I guess your crusty butt is staying at that hotel too. But alas, logic does not shame an entitled mother-in-law. Can I come home with you guys to rest for a few hours? Husband shoots me a glance because he knows I'm about to pop off and he's giving me the go easy eyes. No. Why not? Because your sister needs help with her daughter. That's the sole reason you came, isn't it? Ha, you mother flower. I know it ain't. You're mad we skipped 2017 holiday season with you and you want to get back into my house over my dead body. Oh, she's fine without me for a few hours. Then why did you even come? Anyways, your son and I don't have time to chauffeur you back and forth all day. We have a lot of work to catch up on and we're going home. Oh, I'll just call a cab later. Who 
what do you kids call it? A goober? You know dang well what it's called. I shoved you into one six months ago so you could get to the airport. At this point, I knew what she was doing. I felt kind of paranoid up until now, but she kept pushing and pushing to come back into my home after I threw her out, and I was going to push back. So my husband chimed in. Well, if you need a place to nap for just a couple of hours, to which I then intercepted, then go check into your hotel, Patricia. Everyone's had a long night. Husband knows he almost screwed up real bad, so he just shut up and left the room. I followed. Husband and I get home, we crawl into bed and sleep for exactly one hour before our phones start ringing. It's the gate guard. Okay, so let's back up for a second. We bought a house in a gated community less than a year ago. To enter into the community, you either need a BP box on your dashboard or your name needs to be added by a resident of the community to the gate list. Do you see where this is going? Guard calls us and tells us that a car just dropped off a lady who is screaming at him. She is repeating over and over that she is our mother and demands to be let in. She is saying that she used to be on the list, so there must be a mistake. There's no mistake, PP. I took you off that thing almost immediately after I exercised you from my home. Be gone, Satan. Husband groans and puts on pants to go wrangle his mother. This is the best part, my llamas. So before he can make the approximately one-minute drive to the front gate, PP goes ballistic. She charges the little booth that the guards have and starts throwing things. Staplers, radios, stationery, all airborne. She got a few good throws in there, too. The guards tell me she made contact with a pen cup. One of them suffered a blow to the noggin. Obviously, they call the cops. Husband calls me and tells me to get down there because they're about to arrest her, and I say, Oh no, she had better call a lawyer. Ha! Okay, disclaimer, I love my husband very much, and I do not feel good about leaving him high and dry to deal with the cops. But what Neptune C was she thinking just showing up like that? What was the best case scenario in her mind? That we were going to welcome her into our home again and then everybody hugs and drinks hot tea together? Idiot. In the end, Hubby talked them out of pressing charges because she was playing up the little old lady routine pretty hard. He drove her back to the hotel, but that incident made her zero in on the seismic shift in my relationship with her. I didn't even come to the gate to deal with her. She had lost control over me. She could not get to me because she couldn't reach me anymore, either emotionally or physically. And as we all know, this is the recipe for an extinction burst. They get 350 degrees Fahrenheit for 20 minutes until golden brown and toothpick comes out clean. Hooey. Initially, it seems like if the mother-in-law had simply accepted responsibility and apologized to OP, this could have been avoided. But there is so much more to this story. For the non-Redditors, you should know the following. Just Know Mother-in-Law is a subreddit dedicated to stories and support for people dealing with entitled, crazed, or narcissistic mother-in-laws. Support might be a stretch these days because it definitely houses a bunch of drama llamas, aka addicts, who love the drama. Regardless, the commenters aren't from that community and wouldn't know that there's usually more behind the story to explain why OP or her husband may have already been at the end of their ropes with the entitled mother. That context and more comes in our next video, but keep that in mind as we listen to the comments. Since most of these stories were deleted, the comments were a bit bare. I picked some reactions from Best of Redditor updates, and I found them super interesting. Let's jump in. This one's definitely better read than listened to, but in response to this is my last and final update. Someone said, glances at scroll bar. In response to, you guys really drilled it into my head that everybody knows what privilege is. I mean, law and order has been on air for 400 years. Smished said, this is why you never get advice on Reddit. Death GP added, by the way, you should totally share private and confidential information of court cases you were involved in with the public. This advice was brought to you by your average Redditor. Beatrice V said, Something about OP style of writing really rubs me the wrong way. Someone else added, so arrogant. My parents did not go to college and I am super educated. I know my parents do not understand my world, but when they say something super out of alignment with my reality, I choose to treat them with empathy, not disdain. If someone talked to or about my parents like OP does, I'd divorce them. Someone else said, same here. It's almost like relishing in the drama of her own life. It makes me wonder if she's creating even more drama for herself. Sausage Fingers said, This one kind of pissed me off. I'm just finishing up legal ethics right now. The mother-in-law super overstepped, but OP went nuclear on her when she very much shares the blame. She encouraged this behavior by sharing these little tidbits that she was absolutely not supposed to be sharing. Her husband effed up by sharing the door code, and OP effed up by leaving the files accessible to a snoop. OP is concerned about being sanctioned because she should be sanctioned. 
And no, very few people understand privilege, and even if they did, it's OP's duty to uphold it, not her mother-in-law. OP is a crap lawyer. I answer idiots added, thank you. I was starting to feel like I was being a drill sergeant, like she absolutely shares the guilt here because she did a bad job at keeping confidentiality. If you've enjoyed the story and would like to hear more, consider liking, subscribing, and leaving a comment. Thanks, and bye for now.